Hello, everybody. I'm so happy to be here in the Kubernetes Edge Day, share with you about my thoughts for the edge computing. So my today's topic is streaming analytics on edge with Quip and Kube Edge. Before starting the session, I will introduce a little bit about myself. So my name is Rocky Jin, and I'm the initiator of EMQX Kuiper project. And also I'm the Kuiper Edge IIoT worker group member, and also the LF Edge X Foundry project committer, and also the application and the China working group member. I'm also the former IBM China Software Development Lab as technology and the product leader and the architect. Now, let's look into what's the streaming analytics. So streaming analytics is our software or framework for stateful computation of unbounded data streams. So user can manage, monitor, and analyze real time of live streaming data. So the typical such kind of software is Apache Flink or Apache Spark. But both of the software are typically running at the cloud data center. That is not fit for the edge computing. Why Apache Flink and Spark are not fit for the edge streaming analytics? It has slowing, it has following three reasons. The first is that the latency. So it will take some time to send the data from the edge to cloud. And the secondary is the data security. So it is not fit for all for all of the data sent into the cloud for security reasons. And the last is the bandwidth costs. So for some user scenarios, the data collected frequency would be very, very high. So it will, it, it will cost lots of bandwidth if you user want to send all of the data from the edge to cloud. For example, in the internet of a vehicle or IIoT I, I, scenario, it will take lots of bandwidth if collect the data uh, from the edge to the cloud. So there are three challenges for edge streaming analytics. The first is that uh, lightweight and high efficiency. So for most of scenarios, the device or computer or the server deployed as the edge is not very good. So it has restricted resources. The CPU and the memory is not very good. But we will have such kind of software running at the resource restricted devices. And the next is agile and flexible. So the IT change is more frequency than before. We need to have our application or software to support the agile environment. And the next is the deployment and the management. So the device are deployed with distribute. They are not centralized as in the cloud. And also it possibly with very weak network access. So the software needed to be deployed to the edge devices. It will take a lot of effort to do this. To resolve the issues, so we propose the Kuiper project the Quiver project is an open source software for IoT edge analytics. 
The project is initiated by EMQ. So I here introduce a little bit about the EMQ. So EMQ is an open source IoT infrastructure software provide. And now it has a MQTT message block, which is the most popular open source software project in the GitHub. Below, I list uh, some of the quick milestones. Uh, so in October 2019, uh, the Kuiper project was open source and uh, released the first version. And in the 2020, uh, we have three major milestones. The first is that we integrate with Edge X Foundry. And secondly, we integrate with uh, Kuiper Edge. And also in October last year, the first stable major version was released. And in the latest version was released at February this year. The Kuiper project supported the binary data processing and the machine learning or AI function support. Here is the overview information of the Kuiper. So I just mentioned in the uh, previous slides. So the project uh, was a software deployed at the edge must be lightweight. The Quiver project is uh, binary installable and also provides dark images. Currently it has only about uh, eight megabytes install package and the 10 megabytes initial memory overhead. So it is quite lightweight. And also it supports different kinds of CPU architect. For example, the AMD and ARM and PPC. And also it supports different kinds of Linux systems and OpenWRT, Mac OS, and also provides the dark images Below I list some of the performance data that are running at Raspberry Pi 3B plus with the transaction per second is about 12,000. And the CPU consumption is about 70%. And the memory usage is about 20 megabytes. Of course, the benchmark data is uh, up to the different kinds of user scenarios. So for detailed uh, test scenarios, you can refer to the URL in the slides. So by using the Quip, you can achieve the goal of the data ETL, I mean, data extraction, data transformation, and the data loading at the edge. So if you look at the right side of the picture, we provide the source, and at the right side is the sinks. In the middle of the architecture diagram is the Kuiper runtime. So for the data extraction, user can specify different kind of data source. It could be the MQTT data source or MQ data source or even the uh, HTTP data source or database data source. With the data transformation, so we provide the SQL-like language. User can achieve analytics and uh, uh, transformation with uh, SQL. And the data loading, so user can save the result data to different kind of the target system. For example, the MQTT, the file, the HTTP, and also possible is uh, all kinds of the database. So here are three steps to use the Quip. The first is to create a stream. So a stream is similar to a data source. Uh, that uh, defined uh, where the data comes from. Uh, in the right, here's an example. 
So the data, data source is from the topic of an MQTT broke with the data center format is the JSON type. And the next step is to specify a rule. So rule specify how to process the data and also where to send out the analysis result. So here we have a SQL property which specifies the SQL logic. And actually means that where the data or the result, result data send to. So the first is that a log, which means that the data will be printed to the log file. And the second is MQTT. So which means that the result will be sent to the broke.emqs.io with the topic device slash result. And the last step to submit and run the rule. So user can issue a command against the query address uh, uh, server with the rules specified in the previous step. So that is all of the three steps to use the quip. Here I uh, will introduce a little more detail for the SQL analytics. So first of all, we provide the uh, build-in functions, which include the mathematics, string, aggregation, conversion, encoding and decoding, hashing, JSON processing, and others. Totally now about uh, 80 functions. And also, Creeper provides a field. So user can filter the data by well or case one SQL clause. Also, it uh, provides the join. So user can use different kinds of join, the so left join, right join, full join, and cross join. So one string can be joined to another string. So string is a dynamic flowing data. And also user can join to another tables. The tables is a, a static data. So it is normally used for associating additional information. So for example, if the report data has an ID, but the target system or things need to get the name. So it can be joined to the tables to get the related name. And the next is the window. So it provides the tumbling, hopping, sliding, session, and the count. So the window is uh, often used in the uh, IoT tests, uh, IoT user scenarios. User can use the window to calculate different kind of uh, uh, analytic results with a specified of uh, period of time. And the last uh, provided by the SQL is the group by and order by. So user can group uh, by different kind of conditions and order by uh, specified fields. Here, introduce about the advanced analytics uh, provided by the Quip. So Quip currently also support the binary, the binary data type spot. The first is the binary image processing. So user can resize or reduce the resolution uh, of the uh, image before sending to the cloud. So in the right side is an example. And also it provides the geo hash functions for processing the longitude and the latitude. So user can call the geo hash encode, geo hash decode, geo hash neighbor, and the geo hash boundary box, and so on. The last one is that user also can use machine learning or AI streaming processing. So there are two approach to achieve the goal. The first is that encapsulate the machine or machine learning or AI function with quick plugin. By this approach, user can get better performance. 
but with higher development and the maintenance effort. And the next approach is to use uh, machine learning AI services by RPC or REST API. So in some of user scenarios, the machine learning or AI is exposed with the REST API or RPC service. So the creepers can support invoke these interfaces with function call. With this approach, lower development and uh, deployment effort, but sacrifice some performance. So at the right side, here's an example. The input is the image data byte array. And we want to label the image. So user can just uh, write the SQL, such as select label image function, uh, from the stream. So the output would be the image content uh, of the image. Next is extension and plugin. So Creeper provides three extension points, source, sync, and function. After extension, users then can use it in the Creeper framework. So here are three steps to achieve the goal or develop a plugin. The first is the development and the debug in your local environment, and then compile to the SO file with the same environment as running in the production, and then deploy the plugins. So in the right side, I listed a source extension example. So user will have to implement three functions or interfaces that are required for the source plugin, the configuration, the open, close, and the last is the initial nice an instance for your plugin. So this is a native plugin environment uh, development. So the advantage is, is that uh, it can achieve the better performance because the plugin is loaded uh, with native. But the disadvantage is that uh, it has very strict, uh, it has very strict limitations, uh, which comes from the Go language. The so Quip plugin is based on the Go land plugin. Uh, so user will have to uh, have the same Go version between the Quip and uh, your plugin. And also the library dependency must be the same. And also should have the same Go path uh, for the Quip and your plugin. It is hard to maintain and the development. So user also, we are use Creeper in another two scenarios. Uh, here is one example. The first is the rule engine, rules engine. So Edge X Foundry uh, in the right side, the Creeper project was uh, the referenced rule engine implementation in the Edge X Foundry project. So from the April, 2020, it has been uh, included in the address Foundry project. So if you try to use the uh, address Foundry, the Creeper is also included in the project. And then the next is the data format and the protocol conversion. Uh, so for some of the reasons, uh, user wanted to uh, accept the data from source and then after processing, send the data to another system. But the two systems has different protocols or data type. So user can use the Quip to do some uh, transformation and conversion. So one of the example is that uh, 
user use the SAP NetWeaver RFC SDK to extract the data from the SAP system and then send it to another system after processed by the Kuiper rules. Now in this page, I will introduce a little bit more about uh, Kube Edge and the Kube integration. So the Kube Edge is an open source project extending native containerized application orchestration capabilities to host at Edge. With the Kube and the Kube Edge integration, it enhanced the Edge analytics capabilities. So the benefits for the two open source project uh, integration that uh, it addressed the IoT edge computing challenges. So with the uh, Kuiper capabilities provided uh, for edge analytics, it, has, it provides lower latency and the bandwidth cost saving because all of the data are, can be processed at the edge. And also it, for, it is easy for user to implement or refresh the business logic because user can just change the Kuiper rule at the uh, cloud side. And the last uh, benefit comes from the Kube Edge. User can manage and deploy the Kube applications or AI algorithm from the cloud and also manage the rule from the cloud. So it address the three uh, challenges uh, from the uh, for for the IoT edge computing. Here is a customer case that uh, leverages the Kube Edge and the Kube. So Kube uh, accepts the data uh, collecting from the device connected to the Kube Edge, and after processing one rule will save the data to the infra DB, which is a time series DB deployed at the edge. And another rule was deployed for synchronize the data or send the data uh, from the edge to the remote MQTT broker, which is deployed at the cloud side. The next step for the Quip project, so uh, we will contribute the Quip to the LF Edge. Now it's under the uh, submission process. And also we will collaborate with more of open source projects uh, from now on. Uh, the last is that we will introduce more features uh, in, at this year. For example, the third party language plugin development support. As I mentioned in the uh, previous page, so the native approach of plugin development is not very convenient. So we will support the third party language plugin development, which will be more user friendly uh, to the plugin development. And also we will persistent we will add a persistent support with uh, third party frameworks such as Redis. And uh, for more detailed information, uh, please refer to 2021 roadmap. You can click the link for, to get more detailed information. Okay, so that's all for today's session. Uh, if you have any question, let's discuss. Thank you.